Hello, we're back. Just finished the layout. Really happy with the outcome. Until I actually see the finer details and nothing is ever happy because that's how it always is. I always do a project and I get tired of it. Oh, I just don't like it. Oh, this is this is terrible. I don't like to do it again. So let's start off. What do you actually do? This is more of a PCB tips. More so how do you want to lay out a board? How do you want to do things? There's It's such a big topic. So I'm only giving you tips and things that, of course, what I know. But it's such a big topic, like I said. It will, you know, there's so many good resources on there. Like Altium Academy does there's quite a good, quite a good range of uh, helpful tutorials and videos for certain subjects that you may or may not know, or you may want to expand your knowledge on. But I want to cover a few general tips here, what you'll see here, and hopefully this will get you to do some basic, you know, some basic PCB layout for the projects you've got, and of course more advanced stuff like oh, i wouldn't say advanced but like more intricate stuff like impedance matching you know when do you do that um, rf circuits different layer stacks thing things like that and you know it's only little details that even you could ask questions about it all day like why do we need to do this why but i'm here to just give you a brief very brief things on the general tips and things so let's get right into it we'll start with the power section as per I want to explain what the circuit does whatsoever. It's all covered in previous videos. So take a look at that if you ever wonder. But here we go. We've got the standard micro USB coming in. And one one thing you should notice with micro USB, because it is a connector that you will have a little lip here. So a little overhang. And this is where you plug your, your actual cable in. So it's good to place it on the edge here. If you place it too far inwards, you know you won't be able to get your cable in. Essentially. So place it against the board. Got the the charging circuit here and you notice I use different track thicknesses and whatever generally you want to use the thickest track as possible uh, because there's least resistance and overall it is just better if, if it's there if you can might as well do it I like to try and fit in the pads as generally as you could see maybe this one I could probably thicken it out I can do a track fattening exercise so generally when you do finish your board there's a little thing that you need to track fatten you know but tidy up the little things and you know like these tiny little things that will annoy me but moving forward that that's two things that we should know about you should also know that i've got ground wires uh, separated around i've got them connected so think of it the the current or something it needs a return path essentially and that's why we place these ground wires and not just have them directly connected to the board so it needs something that will go into the inner ground plane so this is a four layer board i haven't labeled the layers here but this would be the 3v3 ground and the top layer and the bottom layer are both ground pores moving on into here we have the battery section which is just the charging we have the actual battery connector and this one is like one of the molex two two pin 2.4 millimeter gap pretty standard thing i haven't actually used this i'm not too sure if i could find a connector that I could just plug on in I, I suppose i haven't ordered the parts yet so i do have to take a look but if they don't fit i could just solder the batteries there you know, it's it's not not too difficult to do. There's always that option. And moving on, so we got this. We got the FET and everything. We've got test points. I believe I covered them in the previous videos, but they're just there to test. And I do need to add little ground pads around because I don't think I've actually added any. So I need to I need to do that. I need to do that. So add some ground, not only to test, but also some ground tests so because you need a reference to that, the positive and negative. Moving on, we have got the power switch here. Again, it's placed in the middle. You can place it anywhere. Uh, but just be wary of the height of your board. If you do have slice up enclosure, I'm going to 3D print an enclosure, so it doesn't really matter to me. Got the switching and the buck boost converter coming in over here. And one thing to note is that when you when you have a switching element, try to avoid having any lines across them or underneath them. As because it is switching, it can induce noise. It can kind of mess up your comms. So you do not want to be doing that. Have a nice uh, guard trace around this. So this would be a, just a ground pore essentially. So let's take here. Like this is this used to be empty. There was no pore, but I put a ground wire in, fitted in to get a little bit of a ground pore going across here. Because this uh, crystal is also a switching element, and you generally want to have a nice ground pore around it just to contain it. Let's say that contain the noise in. And we've got this decoupling caps, moving in, moving in here. And the general rule of thumb with decoupling is that you want to place them as close to the IC as possible because the longer longer tracing is bad. Have short traces, short thick traces if you would. Take them as thick as possible as you can see. I've just put a ground pore here. I'm not too fond of KiCads unless I'm doing it wrong. I probably am doing it wrong, but I'm not too fond of KiCads pore. If that makes sense. I I know how to use Altium and I much prefer Altium. It just seems convenient, nicer. Does it have a? I guess I put none. Oh, 
I might go back with my squarish one. Now, coming over here, standard LC filter, do more decoupling cards, more input capacity, plus points, M203, 3RDO. Nothing much going on. Again, just keep decoupling and capacitors in general. If the decoupling filtering capacitor is close to the IC pins possible, because that's where they generally want to live. Now we've got to the main brain of the circuit, if you will, it is the microcontroller. Nothing much going on here, cogs whatsoever. More of a standard on off type thing with all the LEDs and feedback things. Only got a few, only got like a few analog pins going on. And so it's not really complex, the circuit. I'll start off with the programming header here this this header here is just a footprint and it's quite nice if you especially if height is a major constraint it's just just a footprint like i said it just plugs into these two holes here and some poker pins these these signals here is what you should be concerned about this one you want to keep sure to make sure you have those them guard traces around so like i said before it's a chuck of iron here because i did not have a pull in here so i would rather have that there and that not and especially like it fits in so this do doesn't hurt does not hurt at all and when you come to think of it, see when you get the bigger packages, so like I said before that these these lines here, they need to be protected and you have that thick guard trace around them. So try and fit in as much ground floor as you can, it doesn't hurt. And the rest of the circuit really is just kind of just switching things on and off like the LEDs and such. And of course if they were shorter it would have been better, but same as just switching, I'm not too concerned about that. I would say the analog, so the analog feedback, so this feedback line is quite long. And I could have done a better job on maybe shifting everything down or something like that. Or maybe thought about the placement as well, this VUSB line here. I could have really thought about that before. And maybe tried, kept it all in one area. Area, sorry. As you can also see, the ground one is kind of just like going up all the way there. Maybe if I kept it in the wrong, this area. Shifted things around, it would have been a much nicer layout. But we live and learn. Coming over here same thing decoupling caps should be kept as close as possible if you can fit it ground wire fit it in much better one thing i would like to add is that silk screen you should add it if you can because it does help out a lot especially if you do not know um what switches you don't need to keep going back to the schematic and it is it is included in what you do and as you might as well chuck it on there especially just anything like like the gas price and battery indicator things like that and if you have a logo or then what this board does you know you might as well chuck it on there it, it makes makes things easier i don't really have much else to say for this board in particular except probably thinking the tracks up a bit and you know get these things sorted but that is generally as we do more complex boards in the future with more communication lines and things and some some antennas and whatnot then it becomes a bit more intricate and we need to start paying a bit more detail but for a simple thing like this it, it wouldn't be too much of a hassle and to work as so like speaking about the ground floor and then <laughs> show you you see we found something here one other thing now that that reminds me if you have things oh this was a good example so i did say about the ground floor thing but this could also act as an unintentional antenna so do keep in mind that so if you do have something like that it would be worth chucking in a wire up there to prevent that unintentional antenna and chucking another one there so these long strips are actually can act like a microstrip antenna in a sense so you do want to chuck in a wire to ensure that it is you know that, that it is grounded it's not picking up anything that you do not want at all so you can see this whole line here so just chuck in a wire or two or three to ensure that that's one thing i did always mess up is uh, doing that much and don't always wires i would stick in stitching wires in but i don't think it'd be that thing i believe the cost also goes up with the amount of holes you have to have filled in i, I suppose but for more complicated boards definitely would put stitching wires in and i'll explain that in another video what what are they and what they do and such but just keep that in mind so again nothing much to go off on i'm gonna get this board ordered fixed and yeah we can proceed on to the program